We've seen an overview of how the runtime permissions work in Android Marshmallow. In this video, we're going to actually do a hands-on example. So we currently have an application where we can click this open button and see the image gallery. We can select an image, but then our application dies. It doesn't say why, but the reason is we simply have not requested those permissions. Let's start from there. All of the work that we need to do here is in Color Capture Activity, which is the Java class that's backing up this screen right here. And so a lot of it we've, we started in our prior videos. One note, I am going to take a few liberties here. Dealing with backwards, th th this will take a little time to get through, and I want to get through it as quickly as we can to, to be courteous of your time watching this video. Uh, dealing with backwards compatibilities is a whole other subject that, that would take a bit more time. And right now, I'm going. we see that Marshmallow is supported. And uh, we see that it's fairly dominant at the time I'm making this video. Uh, so I'm going to not worry about backward, backward compatibility for Lollipop and things prior. Just shave about seven minutes off this video. Now we already, we already have this open gallery, so we saw that that worked. When we open the gallery, we're going to need to read an image from the SD card or from internal memory. And that's why we need to request permission. So before we even go to the gallery, let's request the permission. Now, one thing we want to do is a bit of refactoring because this logic here, we're going to end up calling from several places potentially. So what I'm going, and also this is a button handler. Generally, if something is a button handler, like a public method, it's not a good idea to call it repeatedly from other places that aren't button handlers. So I'm going to highlight this. I'm going to right click and I'm going to say refactor. And I'm going to say, uh, just a moment, extract and method. There we go. Looks a little funny because I'm in presentation mode right now, but nonetheless, we will call this invoke gallery, just like so. And okay. So you see right now I've just moved the logic to another method. No big deal. Okay. Now what I can do is I can use this button handler to figure out whether I have permission and also request those permission. I'll warn you, some of these lines get a little bit long. So I'm going to say if check self permission. That means do I have these permissions? Manifest dot permission dot read external storage so so what we're doing okay let's do a little bit of magic here alt enter import manifest okay uh, we're not complete here so we have a little bit more we need to go so check self permission manifest permission read external storage equal equal package manager dot permission now take a look you see there's permission granted and it's off the screen a little bit there's also permission denied so let's just say permission granted. Okay, uh, so long string, we're just saying, do we already have this permission? Now I have a red line here, that's the backwards compatibility I was talking about um, earlier. I'm going to cheat and I'm just going to say uh, requires API like so uh, to get rid of that for the moment. So nonetheless, if check self permission, well now this, why'd I put a semicolon there? This is an if test, so we need to do open curly, close curly. Uh, and in this case, what happens if we're in here, the user has already granted permission to us so we can open the gallery. Boom, easy as that. The trickier parts on the trickier part comes on the else part. The user has not yet granted permission or has revoked it and we must request it. Okay, so this is where things get a little bit more interesting. First of all, if you saw my prior video that went over an overview, one of uh, overview of permissions, one of the things I talked about was declaring a string array in line. So I'm going to say string and then the square brackets to indicate an array permission request equals del uh, open curly close curly manifest dot permission dot read what spell that right dot read external storage. So that's the permission that we want to request. Now, this looks super really funny because first of all, we have this odd uh, curly instance here. As I mentioned in the previous video, what we're doing here is we're simply declaring an array and then assigning the values to the array in line. I could have other strings that follow this because it is a string array, but in this case, I only want to request one permission. So that's why that looks kind of funny because it's not obvious it's an array. Number two, it is a string array, but we have this constant going on here. What in the world is this? Well, 
What we'll find out is under the covers, read external storage is simply a string that represents the read external storage permission. So we just bundled up, bundle it up and put it into a string array. Okay, so now let's request permissions. So request permissions. Okay, and what do we pass in? Our permission request array. And then we need a request code. And what's a request code? Well, remember my analogy about the self-addressed stamped envelope. A request code is essentially the return address on that self-addressed stamped envelope. So when we go to our mailbox, we know where this letter came from. We can request permissions from many places in an activity, but they will all come back that self-addressed stamped envelope. They will all come back to the same mailbox and we need a way to differentiate them. So, it, the, the, the request code is simply a number, any number. Let's go with 1999. That was a good year as well. But, you know, this isn't very readable because it's a magic number. So let's make it a constant. I simply put my cursor on the 1999 and in Android Studio, hold Control Alt and then press C. And now you see public static uh, final int request code even lets us move it to another class if we want to. That's awfully nice of them. So let's let's give this a very descriptive name. We're going to say read external permission request code. It's okay to give this a, a kind of long name because when we replace a magic number with a constant, a lot of the value, but not all of the value, is just in making our code more readable. Okay, speaking of readable, a little bit of tidy up here, and we are done with this method. We now need to see what happens on the other end when we handle the result. So I'm going to start within my class, but not within another method, I am going to start typing on request permission result and IntelliJ is smart enough to say, I know what you want to do. You want to overwrite a method called request permission result. Now take a look at the first thing to come in, the request code. Take a look at the next thing. It's a string of permissions that were requested. And then the final argument, if I cursor over a little bit, is whether or not the user granted that permission. So the tricky thing is that notice these are both arrays and so we kind of have to match them up the permission and the and the yes or no on that permission by the element number in the array. In other words, if we were requesting three permissions, we would have the three permissions here, then we might have a yes no yes over here. So the first one was approved, the second one not, the third one was approved. So we have to do a little magic there. These two rays are what we would call, I think we used to call them a companion array or something like that uh, back in the day. Okay, nonetheless, let's get started. So if request code, what are we doing here? We're looking at the self-addressed stamped envelope that we have received with our Price is Right tickets. So request code equal equal packet, oh, uh, sorry, if request code equal equal, uh, read external permission request code. Oh, okay, you remember that guy? We just saw him up there on line 84. So we're hearing back from read external uh, read external permission request. Okay, good. So I'm going to say if grant results, now what's grant results? Remember, that is that final parameter in this method. So if grant results zero, We've only requested one result, so or we've only requested one permission, so this one's easy. At least if we requested three, we'd actually have to iterate through and see if the user said yes to all, no to all, or some combination. But if it's just one, no problem. So if grant results zero, the first element of the grant results array, equal equal package manager dot permission granted. Remember that? We tried that up above where we said check self permission. Do we already have this permission? And we checked with package manager dot permission grant. Whoops, package manager dot permission granted. Uh, and when we decided that we didn't have permission, we went to the else part and we requested permission, which is what takes us to where we are here. So uh, package manager permission granted. Guess what? If the permission was granted, then we can safely invoke the gallery. There we go. If not, uh, we probably should disable the, the button where the that invokes the gallery, but I might just put up a toast for the moment and say toast.maketext this comma uh, can't open the gallery without permission. Note to self on this. If you are working through something like this, and I will tell you this from experience, if you're working through something like this, you get to a point here and a business analyst hasn't told you what text should be there, uh, or you just don't know what it is because you haven't asked the question yet, uh, 
fight the urge to put in something funny because as funny as it sounds to you and your fellow developers, you'll forget about it, it will go live and the software will look terrible. <laughs> Don't do that. So put in something that, you know, that, that does explain the reason and um, don't say you moron why didn't you give me permission you will you, you will probably regret that uh one good practice is we can uh extract this string and we can put it i think i'm doing it the wrong way here let me actually alt enter uh extract string resource uh, that's a good idea so this will put it in our uh, strings.xml so it can be translated so resource name uh no external read permission you see now that takes it from our source code, puts it into strings XML, makes it easy to uh, translate this app into other languages. Now with a little compile and run magic, let's see what happens. First I'll do it the fast way, uh, then I'll slow down and do it in the debugger. So first I'm going to decline the permission. Uh, that will give us an opportunity to prompt one more time. So first of all, click deny. When I hit deny, Watch down at the bottom, a toast will pop up saying, you know, can't open the gallery without permission. So deny, and there's our toast. Now, let me go ahead and snap a breakpoint here on, on per, uh, request permission result. And just a few more of the open uh, gallery clicked, which is where we're asking for the permission. And we also need to grab it, just one more here on the, uh, let's do the invoke gallery. So invoke gallery on request permission result and uh, the on gallery clicked, we're in good shape. So back to our emulator. And now let's watch what happens when we do a deny. You see it comes in to the click method. It comes into the on click handler. Uh, do we have the permission? Okay, uh, no we don't, so we need to request the permission. F9 takes us back to where we're requesting the permission. We say deny, okay. On request permission result, did we get the permission? Permission granted? No, we did not, so it jumps right to the else part and it pops up our toast. Now let's try it one more time, but this time let's go ahead and grant permission. So we click, we hit the breakpoint again, we'll go ahead and F9, make that a little bit faster. Let's allow this time. Okay, now let's slow down a bit here. So did we get the permissions we requested? Yes, we did. So let's step into Invoke Gallery. And you see, this is where we, this is where we did our previous video, where we used an implicit intent with an action constant, data and type, to invoke the image gallery. So F9 on that, oops, wrong button. F9 on that, let's go back and take a look. Now we're in the image gallery. Double click on the camera. Let's select one of these images. And here we are. The image shows where before the app used to crash, now the image appears. So I hope this video has been helpful. It sure did take me a little bit of time to figure this all out, so I thought I'd share it with you. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Thank you.